Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, at various places on the internet. It is Sunday, May 15, 2011. It's 3 p.m. according to my computer clock. This is a bit late, kind of, but uh, I'm going to be giving a review of the last three episodes of Smallville. Uh, these are Prophecy, which originally aired on uh, Friday, May 6th, and Finale, Parts 1 and 2, which is the Smallville series finale, which originally aired on Friday, May 13th. Okay, Prophecy. I'm not going to review the whole episode, um, but, uh, what, okay, one part I'll, I'll say that I like, just to get that out of the way. I liked, um, Kara using, uh, a bone arrow, and Oliver's, like, nice shooting partner, and she's like, thanks, you know, that, that was kind of nice, but, okay, the main, uh, problem that I have with Prophecy, well, there, there's a few problems, but let's start with the biggest one, okay, I am a huge Supergirl fan. Not so much the comic books. I stopped reading the comic books back in, like, I don't know, 2004, maybe a bit later, somewhere around there. Uh, but I'm a big Supergirl fan, more so the overall concept of the character than any particular incarnation. But, um... I keep getting disappointed by Supergirl stories. Um, there was the movie in 84, which was okay, but it's, it was still weird. Didn't like how they handled uh, the animated incarnation with her uh, going off to the future and staying there in Justice League Unlimited. Um, didn't... I... I hate Peter David's comic book series, and uh, I stopped reading the current comic book series as well. Uh, it's just that any long-running Supergirl story seems to end in disappointment for me. Um, if you want a good, basic, done-in-one Supergirl story, then check out um, Superman and Batman Public Enemies. Or no, that, well, yeah, check that out, but then check out Superman and Batman Apocalypse. That's the sequel to it, that stars Supergirl. And th that was a good story. I, I have an issue with it, mostly involving Wonder Woman kidnapping Kara, taking her to Paradise Island against her will. That was stupid. But overall, it, it's a good Supergirl story. I, I was excited to see Lord of Vanderfort uh, bringing Supergirl to life on Smallville. Of course, then when um, the creators left the series at the end of Season 7, she was dropped from the cast. She was brought back once in Season 8. And uh, she was brought back uh, earlier in Season 10. Um... Episode 3 called Supergirl, which was awesome. I love that. But then she comes back in Prophecy. And then Jor-El summons her to the Fortress of Solitude. And he basically says that Kara's destiny is in another place and time. And Clark must find his own destiny here. And he gives her a choice. She can either leave and let Clark find this destiny. Or she can stay... And, uh, the, doom the entire human race. Now, that is stupid. Um, first of all, there's a bunch of other heroes helping Clark out. He's not alone. Um, so what's the difference if Kara stays or goes? I'll tell you what the difference is. Um, well, I'll, I'll get to that when I discuss the finale, but, um, so basically then she just takes the leech and ring that Clark has and uh, she's like, 
Good luck, Clark, and she's all crying and everything, and she puts it on goes off to the future. So that's the last that we see of Supergirl in this series, is crying. That is such a pathetic, disrespectful treatment of the character. It's such a major letdown for me. Anyway. Um... Another, a few other things from Prophecy that, uh, that I didn't like, uh, Oliver, um, getting up, um, getting to Gold Kryptonite and they're setting that up and he, he's, you know, possessed by darkness, he's got to be evil and stuff. Okay, that, that, it's not so unnecessary as the other problems that I have, but it, it, it's, they, they should have gone that out the way earlier, and not to the time in the finale to that stuff. Um, the other major problem that I have is uh, Lois breaking up with Clark. She breaks off the engagement shortly before their wedding, and her reasoning, so to speak, um, It's really warped logic, uh, but her reasoning is that the more time that he's with her, the less opportunities that he has to save people. She basically sees herself as in his way. So they can't get married. Now, never mind that they see each other at work every day and they live together. Yes, he sold the farm in Smallville and he moved into an apartment in the Metropolis with her to make her happy. So they're living together anyway, and she's calling off the wedding because it, uh, him being with her would give him less chances to save people. That does not add up, okay? That, that was stupid. It makes no sense. Uh, okay, on to the finale. Um... Let's see, uh, the finale, okay, how do we, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just start with the, uh, with the suit, um, there, there's no close-ups of, uh, Clark wearing the suit, I mean, we, we can see some shots of his face, and we can see some blue, and we can see the cape behind him, so we know he's wearing it, but, uh, all the other full body shots are limited to far away CGI shots. We can't really even tell that that's him. I mean, obviously we know that it's supposed to be him, you know, wearing the Superman suit, but I would have loved to have seen Tom Welling in a full on uh, body shot of him wearing the Superman suit. I've been waiting for that for 10 years. So that was a disappointment. I, I did like that final rooftop scene where he uh, goes towards the camera, he takes off his glasses, and he rips his shirt open and suits underneath. That was cool, with the John Williams music playing. That, that was good, but I still would have loved to have seen him um, wearing the suit, clearly. And, okay. Um... Jeez, what do I talk about next? Uh, the finale disappointed me on so many levels. Um, okay. Uh, the wedding. When they finally, when Lois and Clark finally get back together and took them only 40 minutes, or one third of the finale to do that, I mean, yes, they, they, they resolved their romance and they got back together, but it's a resolution that didn't, that it shouldn't have had to occur in the first place. So you waste, like, all, about a third of the running time of the finale on that. Okay, so they go through the entire wedding, and it's all nice and everything. And then, at the last moment, when Oliver hands, um, Oliver's, uh, handing the, uh, ring at, uh, Clark, um, and Lois is gonna put the ring on Clark's finger, and it's a gold kryptonite ring. It's a trap to make Clark lose all of his powers, and then, uh, 
that that that's interrupted. There's a big fight between Clark and Oliver, and the wedding is. It was almost done, and they had to ruin it with the surprise fights and all this. Why? That was that was such a waste. All right. Uh, another thing. Earlier in the season, we saw the um, the spirit of Jonathan Kent appear to Clark for one scene. And it was weird enough back then that Clark just seemed to immediately accept it. Uh, but then it happens again throughout the finale. Clark keeps seeing Jonathan and having conversations with him. And he seems perfectly okay with that. And uh, the only explanation that we got is uh, from Martha, who is basically like, he's always been with us, we just have to listen. It's like, what? I, I mean, she's treating this as if it's a perfectly normal everyday occurrence. And, and it's weird that Jonathan and Martha don't seem to address each other at any point. I mean, at what, the first time that he appears in the finale, Martha, it seems that she looks at him like she's kind of surprised. But then later on, there's, they're, all, they're in the same scene together along with Clark, and it just comes off as really weird. It's as if he's not a ghost at all. It's just that he's just alive and there or something. It's really weird. And and then he, he's the one that hands Clark the Superman suit in the fortress and <sighs> Yeah, that that, that it, it was ludicrous. Uh Okay, um geez, what else? Uh, Jarrell showing Clark key moments in his life. That thing went on for like two minutes. It was longer than the uh, than the series recap at the beginning, which was like one and a half minutes. So that that's that 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 went on too long. Um, okay. Uh, Let's see, what else? Okay, um, Tess Mercer. She was one of my favorite characters in the series. I, I actually really liked her. And, uh, she's murdered by Lex. Oh yeah, Lex is back. Um, but what's worse than that is the way that it's, it's handled. Um, Okay, earlier in the episode, she's kidnapped by Lionel Luther. He wants to cut out her heart uh, to put into Lex because Lex never succeeded in cloning a heart or whatever for himself. She She's kidnapped, but she beats everyone up, and then she shoots Lionel before she escapes. Now, that's really hardcore. Now, later on, when Lex meets up with Clark and they're talking, Clark asks him about Tess, and Lex says, you know, she's fine, and you don't need to worry about her. Now, that lured me into a false sense of security. Later on, when there's about 16 or something minutes left in the episode, Tess shows up at the Luther Corp building to uh, see if Lex is actually alive, and I thought, oh crap, here we go. Um, they have a conversation, and they hug, and they say well, they love each other and stuff, and then he stabs her in the back, and the blade comes out her chest, and it's like, ugh, I, I just knew that this would happen. If she had just stayed away from the building and, I don't know, maybe gone back to Watchtower and see if she could be of any help there, then she would have survived the series. But no. They had to get rid of her and for no real good reason. I mean... Uh, and then she's not even referenced at all by any of the other characters for the rest of the episode. It's like they don't, they're not concerned about her or something. No one brings her up. The only good thing that she does, if you can call that, is she uh, mind wipes Lex. Uh, he forgets everything. She's like, uh, you know, it'll take place 
within 30 seconds, you know, just after she dies, and she's like, the world before this moment will not exist to you. So he's, he's basically going to be a blank slate. And then we see a montage of his memories while, you know, they're being erased. And then after that, he, he just looks so calm as he looks out the window. And it's like, this does not seem like someone that, you know, has no memories of anything up until that point. He should have been freaking out or something. He, he just looked so calm. That that was weird. Now I did like how the Luther Corp sign got destroyed, and it looked like you know the beginnings of Lex Corp. That was kind of neat, but still, that entire scene was stupid. And you could argue for or against the mind wipe. I really don't care, but uh, yeah, that that was just. <sighs> Especially since uh, Lex and Clark had that conversation uh, earlier, and Clark's like, I'll always be there to stop you, and Lex says, like, you know, I'm counting on, or something like that. And then they just immediately destroy that by having Lex's mind wiped, and he doesn't remember Clark at all, and that's... Ugh. Okay. Um, the, the fight... You could argue for, you know, Green Arrow uh, taking out um, uh, Darkseid's followers that easily. You could argue about Clark getting rid of Darkseid and pushing Apocalypse away. I don't know. I thought, I mean, they, they wasted so much time as it is. I guess they had to kind of rush the final battle. But anyway. Going back to Kara, it's very clear now, considering how easily that Superman gets rid of Apocalypse by pushing it away, instead of, you know, destroying it or something, he pushes it away. Now, it's very clear that Supergirl could have done this on her own just fine, and much earlier than he did. So it's clear that the only reason that she was sent away was that she wouldn't overshadow Superman's debut. Basically, for Superman to debut, it was necessary, so to speak, to get rid of Supergirl so she was no longer around. But they could have done that any other way. They could have had some, you know, natural crisis resulting from the... Um, effects of another planet being so close in proximity to Earth causing havoc in some other continent or something and she had to go there to help and then Clark has to basically man up and become Superman. They could have done it that way, but no. It's also clear that they sent Kara to the future just to uh, placate uh, comic continuity masturbating fanboys because anyone else, the average non-comic fan, would not understand why she had to go to the future. There's no in-story explanation within the context of Smallville given to that. Um, so, and, and it, now that I think about it, these last three episodes have been almost kind of sexist, sexist in their treatment of the female characters. At, and at the beginning of Prophecy, Kara was trapped in a force field and needed a man to save her. And then she was sent away so that to uh, not get in the way of Clark's destiny or whatever. And, and I hate that I'll, some um, Kara haters on it. Smallville Internet Movie Database uh, message boards have, uh, you know, insulted Kara and said that Prophecy redeemed Kara by having her make the right choice to leave and not be in a way of Clark's destiny and all that other crap. That's sexist. And then, uh... Tess uh, stupidly 
going to her, uh, search out her villain brother and then being stabbed. I mean, it just, it seems, re all of it seems really sexist to me. Um, okay. Now the final, um, few seats. Now, it starts with a framing sequence of seven years from now, in 2018. Now, that right away means that, uh, you know, everything's going to turn out okay. Now, the thing is, Chloe is reading a Smallville comic book to her son. She and Oliver, who are married, obviously, they've, they have a son. She's reading a Smallville comic book detailing how Clark becomes Superman. It's published by DC Comics, and this exists in the Smallville universe. This does not make any kind of sense whatsoever. But anyway. After she reads the comic to him, uh, she gets a call from Lois at the Daily Planet. Apparently, I'll, I'll get into a reason for a call, but anyway. So, most of the 2018 segment occurs at the Daily Planet. And, uh... They, they, they uh, got the, uh, earlier Jimmy back to play the real Jimmy. This time, like, the younger brother, you know? So that was kind of cool. But anyway, uh... With, uh... Also, there's, like, a computer monitor or something, or maybe a TV monitor, that's announcing a headline. 2018, Lex Luthor elected president. So Lex Luthor is elected president in 2018. Did the writers not do their math or something? You do not have a presidential election in 2018. Writers are retards. But anyway. Okay. Um, now he, here's the worst part. Clark's acting all professional around, around Lois. And he's being his bumbling self like Christopher Reeve did in, in the uh, Superman films. And Lois says that he can cut the act because no one's watching. He's calling her Miss Lane and stuff like that. You know, I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but anyway, here's the thing. Chloe had sent Lois a blue ribbon for her something blue because apparently, get this, Lois and Clark still have not gotten married. Apparently, they're about to. Uh, Lois got the uh, something blue just in time and she asks Clark if he um, has the, he pulls out the rings he opens the box, shows the ring. So apparently they are about to get married. What? Just in the middle of the Daily Planet? Uh, during a busy news day? It's like, what? And if they're going to get married, then why is... Why did Clark do that bumbling, you know, professional relationship uh uh, cover-up thing, uh, with Lois. I mean, that, that, it's like, it's like he was trying to pretend that they were having a purely professional relationship and he was a klutz and apologetic towards her. And what, do they think that the Daily Planet staff just forgot that they had a relationship and were engaged just seven years ago? And, well, apparently not, because, you know, they're all set to get married. So why why this weird, bumbling, professional relationship cover thing that he did briefly? I, I don't know, I'm getting a headache. Um, so they're about to get married somewhere, I guess in the Daily Planet, I, I don't know. But then, uh, but then there's a... Uh, breaking news story that there's a bomb in an elevator shaft downtown or something. So Clark's like, looks like I might be a few minutes late. So 
that's when he runs to a rooftop, rips up his shirt, John Williams' music is playing, you know, okay, fine. But, is this supposed to be meant to be some sort of running gag that Lois and Clark's wedding has been continuously delayed by one crisis after another for seven years? That is just stupid and ludicrous. Okay, uh, jeez, what else? Um, I, I think I touched upon pretty much everything that I've had a problem with um, in these three episodes. So, uh, I, I guess that's it. Just post your comments, let me know what you think. Maybe post a video or audio response if you're so daring. Uh, but I, personally, um, my final verdict is I give it like a C minus or a D plus. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening.